Hello, this is Cute Fuzzy Weasel, and this is a, uh, a gameplay video, and we're going to be playing Kerbel Space Program. So, uh, here we are at the loading screen. There's Jebediah right there in the center. There's, I don't know, Bill? There's another one. You know, if if I was if I was engineering the helmets for uh, the Kerbel missions, I'd probably make them a little bit more oblong, maybe egg shaped. Because if you look at their heads, they're like they're like big cylinders, and you know, in a in a sphere, I bet they're always banging the top of their their like forehead against the glass. But uh, well, you know, they're like expendable lemmings, so it doesn't matter. Anyway, while we're loading here, uh, I should know that yeah, I'm playing this with mods, so, um, you know, I, I like the mods. I like a lot of the mods in the, uh, in the game. And, uh, I'm gonna be role-playing this, re-role-playing this like, uh, like an actual space program. Only instead of years, it's gonna take, uh, it's gonna take weeks for them to, to go from Spudnik to the moon, but, uh, Hey, that's where the fun is. Love this music. It really, like, sets you up for, for the epicness of space travel. Going to other small simulated worlds and crashing your ships, killing hundreds of green people with no eyelids. Wait, do they have eyelids? I've never seen a Kerbal blink, so, uh... Huh. I never thought of it before, but yeah, I guess they don't have eyelids. They're just forever staring out. Like, God, I bet they don't even sleep. Maybe that's why they always have a smile at some planet-wide, like, initiative to keep suicide rates down. Doesn't mean they can't close their eyes, they can't sleep, they're tiny little squishy people, they're basically expendable, I mean... I don't even think they breed, I think they just kind of butt off of each other through mitosis or something. I think he heard me. <laughs> anyway, let's go ahead and start this game. Um... I take it this ship right here is that that guy's ship. Which means he crashed into the moon and, and now, let me go back, now he's stranded. So we're looking at a doomed Kerbal right here. He's stranded on the moon. He's probably gonna asphyxiate in that suit. <laughs> With no way to contact Kerbin. And I'd be willing to bet that the people in charge of the space program on Kerbin don't even care. <laughs> They're probably looking at it like, uh, like, yeah, we, we managed to get a ship to the surface. Uh, did it land? They're like, no, but it did reach the surface, which means getting to the moon is possible. What about the Kerbin inside? Like, no one, no one cares about the Kerbin inside. He's... He's an asshole. No, <laughs> we only send the people we don't like into space. So we're gonna go ahead and start a new mission. I think my gain's a little high. All right, a flag. Um, I could use the Nova Punch flag or the Ares flag. They always look so much more epic. Um, hmm. Hexagon looks good. You know, that that looks very clinical. And that's what this is. It's 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 very very detached. In fact, maybe that's how I'll play it, you know? Like, the Kerbins really aren't the natives to the planet. They're a genetically engineered test species that are used for experimental space flights by some corporation that like doesn't even care about their livelihood or anything in fact that's a really that's actually a really i'm gonna do that okay so so this is an evil corporation that genetically engineered the kerbins uh to to do horrible 
to do horrible space experiments. Like, run them into asteroids and stuff. So what would this corporation be called? I don't want to go with something, um... I don't want to go with something stereotypical. I guess I could call it Horrible Co. Um... Let's see, it's got a blue hexagon. It looks like a D inside, so D hexagon? Like D X E O G O N. Ah, come on. D H X H Hex D Hex Co. D Hex sounds like the name of a rapper. I wish I could rap. <laughs> anyway, let's go ahead and start this mission. The early years of Dhex Co. The first Kerbins were engineered, and and let's see what popped out of the lab. We have Jebediah Kerbin. They, they're given names by the scientists uh, because the scientists are too uh, too attached to their creations, and that's something here at uh, Dhex we've been working on on uh, on getting more detached scientists to do these space missions, but uh, but so far the ones with emotions turn out to be the good ones. The ones without them, they're all like college dropouts and stuff, and I don't know, we're not interested in making meth. This isn't Breaking Bad here. Actually, no, he's a high school dropout, isn't he? Yeah. So let's see. Uh, Shepkal? I wish you could make your own Kerbin. I mean, I know there are mods that let you do that, but, uh, you know, I'd lish... Lish. I wish there was, like, a Kerbin creator where you could name them. Let's see, we haven't lost anyone yet. That's gonna change. Okay, so, assuming the level of technology here is, like, a s stylized 1950s, 1960s, um, we're gonna, we're gonna run on, on, a, on that assumption here. So this first mission is going to be sending up a satellite. They just want to know, like, what it takes to send up a very simple satellite, just to, just to get a baseline for when they start experimenting with these these disposable people. Um, something big and bulky looking. Like this is big and bulky looking. I'd go with the Sputnik one, but I don't know. I just feel like everyone goes with the Sputnik one for the first satellite. You know? I mean, if they're doing if they're doing a historical style roleplay with this whole thing. Everyone's gonna go with the Sputnik, right? Because it, it looks like Sputnik. But no, I'm gonna do something different because this is an evil corporation and they, they're called D-Hexagon and this is a... One, two, three, not a hexagon. Wait, is it? No, this isn't a hexagon. This is a octagon. Whatever. I don't have a hex... Wait, is that a hexagon? Oh, this is a hexagon. Okay, so it works. This is the hexagon. What? Damn it. Anyway, okay, so this is the hexagon. Because this is called D-Hexagon. And they're, they're evil. And this is what they're gonna do. So, this is the satellite core. And, uh... First thing the satellite needs... Is... Let's see. Do they know about photovoltaic panels yet? Yeah, sure. They know simple photovoltaic panels, so something like this. But it needs to be in a housing. So, let's see here. What would be a good housing? Ah, this. This looks like a good housing. So there's that, and it sits on top of this. So I'm thinking maybe a decoupler under here. Like in the final stage, and this will just release, and it'll start doing its little ping. Like, ping! There's a satellite here, bing, bing, that's too big, bing, 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 bing. the satellite died. <laughs> oh, I get it. I, I have to satellite, I, I have to sa um, satisfy my bloodlust here soon. <laughs> I've got to kill me some Kerbins. Um, Alright, so it have two. And obviously they know about batteries. I mean, people have known about batteries for thousands of years. I mean, really, I mean, you kind of think about it like the, uh... Okay, I guess they haven't... I guess the Baghdad battery isn't really a, a good example. Because, well, they probably knew... 
what it did. They probably didn't exactly know what it was. Yep, there's the uh, symbol for the corporation. They probably didn't know exactly what it was that was going on, so... I guess that's a bad example. So maybe hundreds of years, but whatever. This is Kerbin. It's also cute how they let their experiments run around. This is like, uh... Like the minions in Despicable Me, except, uh... Except we don't care about these guys. The, the, the people who created them look at them with a detached kind of kind of inhuman quality. Because really, who cares? They're just, they're just test subjects. Um, separator. I want to try and make sure this thing is aerodynamic. Or at least aerodynamic enough. That's too big. Just get in there, get in there. There we go. So, okay, so this is going to sit on top of the rocket. This is going to detach, and that's going to detach, leaving the satellite in orbit. I want to make sure this separates so it doesn't come back and bite us in the ass, so uh, make sure there's uh, some separatons on this. Separatron. Separatron. Where are my separatrons? Damn it! The Kerbins ate all the separatrons again! My gain needs to be adjusted here. Uh, da, 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 yeah, I guess that's good. So these separatrons will activate once uh, once that goes. Now I want the nose cone to go before this one, so it doesn't end up dragging the satellite around if something goes wrong. I can only hope, for the Kerbin's sake, that the scientists doing this have the same kind of consideration for their own well-being. Maybe I'm playing it up a little too dark, because it's got to be expensive to manufacture Kerbins. So, you know, they've got to... they've got to at least want them to come back. Um... Yeah, so they don't have to make another one. This is a solid fuel booster. I, I don't know. That's not gonna get up. I, I don't even think they'd think that would get up. What is this? Also solid fuel. This might actually make it, because the satellite itself is really not that heavy. But still, I want a liquid fuel booster. This looks a lot like the North Korean space program, actually. <laughs> I could see them doing this. Like, like their top scientists have Kerbel installed on on the uh, on the the secret supercomputer, the secret North Korean supercomputer that's got like five megs of RAM, an insane amount, and they're like, ah, we have Kerbel space program. This will show us how to get into space and defeat those evil Americans who give us all their money every time we we get angry and we throw a fit. Uh, let's see. Yeah, that'll do. They're not really thinking about weight. This is one disappointing thing about the game, really, this music. I don't know, I just... Yeah, you know, with the main menu music, it's it's kind of kind of silly, but it's it's also really epic. But here, I just feel like I'm making a I don't know. I feel like I'm making Disney's satellite. Like there should be Goofy over there. He's like dancing around with a wrench, <laughs> beating Kerbins to death with a wrench. <laughs> I am really dark sometimes. <laughs> um, will this work? This is a good separator. So, there. Actually, I think I'm making this a little too complicated. I mean, it doesn't need to be this tall. I'm only launching this satellite. So, let's get some separatrons in here. Because we want at least, we want, like, some solid boosters at first, you know? Because solid boosters, they burn really fast, but they, they, they throw off a lot of force. 
they throw off a lot of, you know, they've got a lot of power, and, and the, uh, they, they can really help a liquid engine get up to the right height before you, you know, discard them. Like, you discard Kerb. <laughs> oh, man, when they start getting into the man... When, when the, when the D-Hexagon Corporate... Where did the flag go? There it is. When the D-Hexagon Corporation starts experimenting with the Kerbins they've created, it's gonna get really, really freaky. Um, what's this? This is a solid fuel. Ah, that's not gonna work. Um... That could work. Is that solid fuel? You wouldn't think it'd be solid fuel. I mean, just given its shape. I mean, look at that. It looks like like it's liquid, right? Like it pulls the fuel in from, you know, whatever. Now, this should get us up there. You know, at least part of the way up there. So, uh, uh, let, me, let me just switch it out. Maybe there's something bigger here. There! That'll get us going places. Yeah. Alright. So we're gonna go ahead and throw some struts on here so this thing doesn't peel itself apart. Because that would be really embarrassing for D-Hexagon. You know. To have their, their, first, their first rocket just rip itself apart. As it as it goes into space, and, and then all the backers are like, "Ah, can't believe we spent so much money to engineer those those carbons, and now now you've you've torn apart your first ship. We don't have any any faith in this company anymore." Of course, this is an alien planet, so so backers bullying, you know, uh, backers coming out of a company might might mean the company has to be eaten by a space worm. You know, like how it should work today. You ruin the economy, you get eaten by a space worm. The only problem with that is you gotta find a space worm. I wonder if that's... Oh, that'd be a good name for this thing. This would be the worm. No, not the worm. That sounds too... It sounds like this thing should be slithering into space if it's a worm. I mean, I guess they could cover the rocket in slime, but what would that do for the for the rocket, you know? Um, space? No. Ah, okay. Hex One. Sounds like a strip club. The Hex One. Come to the Hex One and see Sandy do her her Star Trek fan day. Ah, oh, ah, oh, man, man, I remembered the star. Oh my God. I worked for years to pull that image out of my head. Oh well, there are worse things. Hex one. First test. I'm, I'm typing around my my uh, microphone, so it might take a little bit. First test. Li satellite. L a u n launched. <laughs> my spelling is horrible. By by D. Hexagon. X Corporation Corp A Corporation to test rocket there to test the rocket to test a rocket to test to test uh, their rocket designs R O C K D S I G N G S T V I two one forty one four one. All right, so save, and we're gonna... Oh, wait, I have to deal with this. I've had that happen too many times. I forget where this is, and it's, like, up here, and then I launch it, and it's just, like, there, and you have to keep hitting the space bar. Anyway, all right, so this is good. This is good. So we're gonna save it and launch. So at this point, I don't even think the Kerbins would be made aware of what they would they would be used for. I think they're still in their breeding facility over there, being being that like having information downloaded into their brains through vacuum tube computers. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna go ahead and launch this. 
bring the throttle up in case this doesn't work. Actually, um, just on the off chance it doesn't work, I want to make, make sure. It doesn't have enough force to lift this. I don't think it's not going to have enough force to lift it. Wait, what? I don't... Let's just launch. All right, three, two, one. Hey, looking good. Looking real good. Yeah, yeah, look at that. It's going slow, but it's relatively stable. I think this might work. Way to steer, steer it. It's going up really slow, but I think we're we are we are showing the the D Hexagon Corporation is showing that they can in fact build a rocket and that they can steer. Oh shit, we're at seventeen. We need to we need to start doing this so we can at least have an orbit or or part of an orbit or something. I should test and see how that how, what that looks like on the map screen. No, still not high enough. One of the things the scientist is writing down right now is space flight is really boring. So, so they will inform the Kerbins, these these weird creations of theirs, that yeah, you're gonna be doing the space stuff, but it's really gonna be boring. So we're gonna load you up with like peanut butter and jelly sandwiches and get you on a good sugar high so you can you can at least enjoy yourselves that way. Um almost. I'm a little concerned about our fuel consumption though. I'm gonna drop it down. Um okay, 74, that's good. I'm gonna cut the engine. And I guess just kind of float around for a little bit, wait for us to go up to 70, and then equalize the orbit. I can speed up time for that, at least. That, 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 60, 61, 2, 3, 4, 5, 7, 8, 9, 10, 70. Okay, here we are, 70. And executing... Circularization. Now this would be the first rocket flight of the civilization, so I mean there's no Come on, come on, do it, do it, do it, do it, do it, do it, do it! Almost! Yes! X X! Yes! Oh, I didn't even need to hit X, we ran out of fuel. No, we didn't. Alright, so the first the first D-Hex Corporation uh, test flight was incredibly successful. They managed to get a, uh, a, a satellite on. So we're going to go ahead and decouple this one. Send it greening towards the uh, Kerbin atmosphere there. Let's test. Let's see how, how, that, how that's going. What? Um, 
Or we could have sent it into extrasolar orbit, apparently. Alright, whatever. I'm gonna go ahead and get there. And there! The satellite is in orbit. Let's go ahead and do that. Do that. There. Name vessel Hex 1. So there it is. Not much to look at, but D Hex's first satellite in orbit. Scanning the entire planet, seeing it all from space for the first time. Of course, the natives of the planet are, are very squishy and frail. So they'll have to use the engineered Kerbins to do the, the grunt work of actually exploring space for a while. Oh yeah. Look at that. Pretty. Pretty. All right. Well, um, anyway, that was their first launch, and I will, I will see you guys next time because up next they're going to. Uh, I'm going to launch a few more of these satellites as the D Hex Corporation, you know, perfects their skill, and then they're going to try launching a Kerbin, and we'll see how that goes. So I will see you next time.